Today, we will be doing a video on how to make some moving smart wearables as per request by Lovely17. Big shout out to Lovely for asking for this video. Um, again, if there's any video you would like to see, please feel free to comment and I will do my best to make a video on that subject. Um, so let's just go ahead and dive in. Um, as you can see, I've already done an init. I've already initialized a smart wearable. I covered how to do that in the last video using the Decentraland SD6 editor plugin for um, Visual Studio Code. So once you've initialized a file and you have it set up as a smart wearable, um, to add your own custom functionality to get some movement, um, I'll explain how to do that right now. So just like last time, we have our main function in our index.ts. Um, right now, our wearable is just the base glasses, um, but just to explain the functionality, we don't really need it to be something special. We can just use the basics. So for our purposes, um, we don't really care about this spawn cube um, function. We're not really going to use it, so we can just go ahead and take that out and just leave this blank on our um, on mouse down so that UI will still pop up, but we're just not even gonna use it. We're just not gonna notice it, but it will be nice to track the player's position. So what I'm gonna do to create a wearable that allows you to move, I am going to begin by creating a new file and I'm just gonna call this elevator.ts. So this file is where we're gonna make our function um, for everything that we want our smart wearable to do and then we'll just call it in our index so we'll start by saying export function um, create elevator and what we're going to make is we're just going to make an elevator that spawns around you and as you press an input button it's going to move you in that direction so I've already written some of this code just to save time. So I'm just gonna copy and paste it from a past wearable. But what we're gonna to wanna to start to do is we're gonna start by having a Boolean. So a, bo a Boolean, um, Boolean, it is a, yeah, it's a true or false statement. And um, we're gonna leave that outside of our function though. And we're gonna start it as false. So we're gonna say they're, they're doing the trigger starting false. They're not doing the trigger to start. So after we've created our Boolean, then we're just gonna create our four platforms. So we need to capture the player in basically a box so that when we move this platform around, when we move this box around, it also moves the player with us. So to do that, we're gonna add four um, platforms, five platforms, uh, like a cube. We don't need one on top because they're not gonna be able to jump out, it's tall enough. So um, we're gonna add five platforms around the player. It doesn't know what engine is because we haven't imported it. So we can just do the quick fix if it will let me click it and add import. And there we go. After that, we need to set the position for these um, platforms. We also need to set the um, set that there's a collider so you don't just fall through these platforms when you hit them. So what we're going to do is we're just going to create four transforms. I'll copy and paste this and I'll explain it. And it doesn't know what any of these things are again, because we just need to import it. So we'll add all missing imports. And there we go. Now we know what all it is. We, this, so what it's doing is it's creating a transform here, which um, it says the position, the scale and the rotation. We're setting all of that for each of our platform. And then we're creating a flyer so it doesn't go through it. Um, so the player does not go through the platform. We are not, this mess renderer is what we use to see the platform. It's currently canceled out because we don't want the player to be able to see the platform. But if we want to debug this and make sure the platforms are in the right position around the player, we're gonna ahead and, and go ahead and cancel that or uncancel that out. And we can update the import and now th that platform will actually show. So let's just start by first creating the box around the player just to get started. So once I do all this and I uncancel out all these, and remember all of our code is running through our index.ts. So after we do this and it looks good and there's no errors, perfect. We have to go back to our index.ts and we actually have to call that. So I believe we called it create elevator and then we're gonna call that. And so that should be good. So let's run npm run start here. So as you can see, when our scene loads, 
if we put on our wearable, which is again, just the glasses, and we allow the permissions, we'll just create a box around our player. So that's exactly what we want. There we go. It might be hard to see at this moment because they're all um, not transparent, but once we get make them transparent, you can see the player cannot move out of this box, no matter how hard they try. So we're gonna use this to trap them and move them around. But now that we know the box is around them, we can go back to our elevator. We can cancel out these mesh renderers. Again, you're only gonna use these for debugging. So yeah, you do not need them in the final version. Um, to go over what this transform is, it is, these are the different um, platforms. So we want, we have our position, which is a vector three, and then we're just setting it 0.5 in front of the player. Um, and then we're setting the parent as our original platform. That's the platform on the bottom, um, just to make sure that it's 0.5 away from that platform. Um, so it's not 0.5 array away um, from the zero, 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 it's 0.5 away from that platform. So we did that for all of the other platforms. We set the parent as a parameter for the transform that we created. Um, so once we do that, we have our box. So now we need to add some functionality to this box. So what we can do is we can create an input that says when the, when the button is pushed down that you want, then it's activating our trigger. So if we do that, we can just copy and paste here. We can add a system or yeah, feel free to copy and paste this because I will be uploading this as a open source resource also. Um, of course, we don't have these imports. So again, we're gonna have to import all this. But as you can see, I am just creating a constant called CMD, which is an input system. And then the engine is adding this input system into the, um, into the um, wearable, into the code. So the engine adds the system, which, and all the system is when the jump is pressed, when I, a jump is pressed, so space bar, that's what it is. When it's pressed down, then in the trigger is true. When I jump is released, when it's pressed up, in trigger is false. So there we have our thing to make sure it's in trigger. What we can do just to check this is say console dot log in trigger and the same thing with this console dot log in trigger. So it's going to log on both those put up and put down and when you're fresh, if we open our developer tools. If we press the space bar, see, it says false. True when we're pressing it, it's true. False when we let go. True when we're pressing it, false when we let it go. So we're just logging that interaction right there. Um, perfect, it works. So now all we have to do is make the platform move when you press it. So, and again, I will be uploading both of these as open source resources, so feel free to use the code at your discretion. So, I also need to get that reset function. So, with within this get uh, within this uh, create elevator function, we created two more functions. We created a simple move function, which um, when when you're in the trigger, so when we're pressing the trigger down. The transform, we're getting the transform as a mutable, we're getting the mutable uh, transform of the platform and the transform position, we're, we're adding um, one to it. So vector three up is uh, adds one to the Y value. As you can see, there's multiple things you can do. You can do vector three forward. You can do vector three down, um, vector three right, vector three left, anything like that. Um, but this is just how, yeah, you go upwards if you want to go up. Uh, adding one to the Y value. We also made this function called reset, which is again, just getting the transform, getting the mutable transform from the platform. And that's equaling our uh, mutable transform. And then uh, it, when we reset it, we're just gonna set our X, Y, and Z to zero. So we're just gonna reset it back to where it was. Um, this is just getting um, the player position and subtracting minus five. So we're just gonna make sure that that play, that, uh, 
platform, the bottom platform goes a little bit down just to debug it a little bit to make sure the player does not fall through when this thing reloads. Um, we need to use the engine to add the simple move system. Okay, so as you can see, when we put on our wearable, we're in a box, and when we press space, we go upwards. Yay, now we can fly. And again, if you wanted to change this to be a different direction, you could change it to vector three forward here. And that's gonna just add us one in the Z direction. So we'll see when I do that. See, as you can see, now we're going forward, moving forward without walking. And you can change the speed of this if you want to, too. You can make them go super fast. You can do whatever. Um, but yes, this is basic player movement. So please, again, thank you so much for the video requests. If you have anything else you'd like to see, please request it, and I'll do my best to make a video on it. Um, I hope this was helpful. I will be releasing um, this library um, via Twitter. If you, if you need it, you feel free to copy the code or anything. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Hope to make more videos soon.